Greetings, mammals. Reverend Leviathan here with Darker Scott Magazine, here at Scarefest 10, or Scarefest X, if you don't know your Roman numerals. So, we are here on one of the biggest Scarefests with some of the biggest names in horror, Robert England, Kane Hodder, and, well, let's see what we have in store, shall we? And this will be my last year covering Scarefest, so, as Dracula would say, we better make this one count. <laughs> yeah, I know, that's lame. Okay. Towering over me now, is Mr. Doyle Wolfgang von Frankenstein, known formerly as the uh, guitarist of Misfits and currently of his band, Doyle. So Doyle, thank you for being with Darkest Goth Magazine. Uh, recently, you guys have had a uh, original Misfits reunion. You've got another couple of shows coming on. So what's it been like being back on stage with Jerry and Glenn after all these years? Um, same. 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 Okay. Uh, could we hope for possibly a uh, national tour of Original Misfits, you think? You can hope. You can hope? <laughs> All right. Um, you know, a lot of people, I know that after Misfits, you know, people know you did Doyle and did stuff with Danzig. Right. But I noticed a lot of people don't know about Gorgeous Frankenstein. So what can you tell us about Gorgeous Frankenstein? Nothing. Nothing? <laughs> okay. And... Uh, well, on your albums, you know, Alex Story is lead singer and love his writing style. He writes a lot about dark romance, it seems. Love songs. Love songs. And uh, so how did Alex Story get picked to be the lead singer of your band? Um, I had um, people send auditions in, and his was the only one I listened to the whole thing because it was all Cancer Slug songs, which are awesome. And um, I called him and I asked him if he wanted to write. And um, he was actually walking into a Danzig concert when I called him. And he said, yeah. So I sent him three songs, and he sent one back, like, in a day, and it was perfect. You know, and then we just started rolling. Awesome. Could you ever see yourself as doing lead vocals? No. Those who can't sing shouldn't. <laughs> Very honest man. And... Uh, Throughout your musical career, I know you've done stuff for many years, what would you say has been your greatest challenge? Challenge? Uh, other people. Other people? Like band members or just regular people? Uh, both. <laughs> both. Just people in general. Okay. And, uh, well, a friend of mine who has actually opened for you guys before told me to ask you this. As bizarre as this question might seem, we'll close with this. Uh, what are your thoughts on oatmeal? What can you tell us about oatmeal? Um, I like it. Like it? Yes. Okay. Well, he likes oatmeal. I think, Qu yeah. Quaker Oats has their new spokesman coming out, people. Well, Doyle, thank you for your time. That's all you got? Well, what else, what else would you like to tell us? I don't tell you anything. I answer questions. Okay. Well, I try to keep it nice and, sh nice and short. I can't think of anything else to ask. All right. So, we, we good? All right, check out Doyle, everybody, especially his new album, As We Die.
Greetings, mammals. Here with me now is the Squatch Detective, Mr. Steve Coles himself. So, Steve, thank you for being with Darkest Goth. Absolutely, man. Now, for those who aren't familiar with you, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, let's see. I've been uh, doing Bigfoot research for the last 18 years. Uh, I've been on shows such as Monster Quest, America's Book of Secrets, uh, The Truth Behind the Loch Ness Monster, and most recently, Monsters and Mysteries and Solve, and Paranormal Survivor. Awesome. Now, you started out as a private investigator, is that correct? That is, uh, actually, I started off as a retail investigator. I was, I was a private investigator for a while, uh, but my career long thing has been a professional investigator. So how do you go from being a professional investigator to a, a Bigfoot detective? Well, at a very young age, I had an interest in it, and I picked up a book and never knew, I thought, like the rest of the population, that Bigfoot was just something in the Pacific Northwest. Found out that there were sightings like an hour and a half and there was a whole book written about it. So at one point I got thinking that, you know, I bet you this is a bunch of baloney. So I went out and I start digging into the mystery and guess what, it wasn't baloney. Okay, and so I think you believe, you told me you've had four encounters? I've had four really good encounters. Two with equipment, two with my naked eye at night. And uh, it's those last two that I've had that I really, I really embraced because they're with my own eyes, not from a piece of equipment. And uh, I've actually, my last one, which was in 2012, I actually saw a juvenile, which is really interesting. I'm only about five and a half foot tall. So really, really wild. Okay. So, you know, we know there are plenty of skeptics out there and people who like to make fun of uh, people who believe in cryptozoology and they claim it's pseudoscience. So what do you say to the skeptics? Well, I, I say to the skeptics, Thank you for the advice. Because if we aren't listening to the skeptics, we're not doing our job right. So that's number one. Number two, if anybody knows any of the stuff that I've done, I take my evidence very seriously. I'm, I'm a big debunker. I debunk 90% of the stuff I get. So when I come out with something that I actually feel is bona fide, it's just, I just don't get it and show it. It's had a couple of months, at least a couple of months of research behind it. Now, I know some people think, you know, you've heard people trying to describe what Bigfoot is. They say he's, you know, one of the last uh, ancestors of the humans and all that. So, but you describe Bigfoot a little differently. How would you describe Bigfoot as a creature to people who want to really know about the creature more than just the myth? Well, I think uh, the people that say, well, it's a, it's a population of people or a homo sapien or, or all this stuff, I, I, we don't have enough information to know that. So what we really need to do is look at it from the basics. And the basics is, it's a primate. We know that much. Articulate hands and feet, large brain, small snout. So knowing that at least gives us some base point. Anything further than that is conjecture, because we don't have a DNA sample. We can't test where it came from. So other than that, it's just conjecture. But we know it's a primate just by its appearance. And that can tell us a lot. What it can do, what it can't do, what it should be, what it shouldn't be. So. Now, with not having DNA samples, haven't they found hair samples that have not actually, they haven't been able to identify with humans or apes or bear, they found certain hair samples? That is correct. Unfortunately, those hair samples didn't have the medulla in it, which is the piece they, they actually draw the DNA out of. So we don't know if that's something in, in their characteristic, or it just so happened they didn't happen to catch it with this particular hair samples. But there have been samples that have been designated as unknown primate. And what would you say to somebody, what kind of advice would you give someone who's just interested in getting into Bigfoot research and Sasquatch and the skunk ape, just any types of, you know, cryptid primates? Don't. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, uh, well, I think she said it best. <clears throat> no, I, actually, I, I would say, number one, there's a lot of things you got to know. If you're going to actually go out in the field, be safe about it. Know your outdoor survival stuff, that's really important because what we do is not a game, it's dangerous. There's bears, cat, wild cat, wolves, coyotes, snakes, the, the insects that are deadly, plants that can cause rashes and, and, and death sometimes. So you gotta know your stuff when you go out in the field like that. You gotta be properly equipped and prepared. It's not a, it's not a cheap endeavor. Um, if you just wanna step into the woods and knock on some trees, Go for it, but that's not really the right way to be doing it. And, you know, there's so many facets. You're going to learn investigation, ecology, biology, 
knowing your mammals, knowing your other plant, you know, your plant life, knowing there's just so much. So what I can suggest is if you want to be into the, any of those things, keep reading, keep reading, but not just on the stuff about the cryptids. Read stuff about the known animals, read stuff about the known sciences, because that's the way you're going to succeed in this. Well, Steve, thank you for your time. And everybody be sure and check out Steve Cole's online at SquatchDetective.com. Here we are for our one year reunion. We yes. have the Diva and the Devo. <laughs> Mr. Rocky Dahl and Christiva Diva. Yay! So We've been friends for a year now, and I'm so very excited to have known you. And Rocky in the last year has become like this convention superstar, and I'm so proud of him with his wonderful hair. And what I've learned about <laughs> you is you're an awesome person in whatever life. You're an awesome person inside and out, and I absolutely love you. Thank you, Rocky, and I love you too because you're keeping the world weird and different and beautiful. We both support individualism and being yourself. Absolutely. And all you kids out there, if you want to be weird, be this. You know? Yeah, like this. And Not a Kardashian. Yes, and we love you all. And uh, I just wanted to say happy anniversary. It's been a great year. Many more years I plan to know you and experience your awesomeness. You're a great Hopefully person. in 20 years we'll be like, hey, Rocky, hey, Christina. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be in our walkers. He'll still be in his little vinyl stuff. <laughs> Will you be missing a few uh, cyber dreads in the back? Yeah, just a couple. <laughs> so who has the better hair between the two of you? Right there. Look. See, I, I think him because it doesn't get caught. I love it. Jewelry. I love it. I love it. <laughs> who has the nicer ass? Definitely him because I don't have one. <laughs> Would you agree? Oh, yes. I love my ass. Okay. <laughs> Well, that's good. <laughs> but I've got better legs. <laughs> yes. For sure. Look at those legs. Long, tall, sexy. I'm very excited. Look. Awesome. The higher the heel, the closer to God. There we go. And like we talked about last time, no grope. You can definitely grope this anytime. <laughs> Starting with the butt. No touching, touching. Yes. And that's where it started last time. Wow. <laughs> Nothing's changed at all in one year. Scarefest 2017, I love you all. Much love. Lots of fun, like it is every year. Thank you very much. Yay. party. This is the the inebriated table. So it's the end of the first day. So let, let's see how people are doing. How's it going? Yeah. 
How are you enjoying Scarefest? Having a blast. Enjoying it. It's great every year. Yeah. How many years have you been coming? Last three. Last three. So we'll get inebriated and enjoy your time. That's the goal. See that? Everybody loves Scarefest, including these people over here. See? See, they like it too. So, all right. Don't forget to tip your waiter.